one. Shotgun situation, David Cohn. He's got Cox rolling out to the left, and this one bounces right off the chest of Bubikar Sissoko, who's behind the intended receiver. Rodgers once again, this time over on the far uh, side of the field, right at the goal line. Rodgers never was ready for the pass, and Bubikar was, but right off his number. So that'll be a stop for the defense. And uh, we'll see what they do here if they do a couple more series. We, yeah, we'll see if we get the threes out, whether we get the ones back out there, or we run one last final play. This is the last series. Uh, I was not even aware that you had this, Steve. <laughs> well, aware of what? I mean, I just tell the coaching staff what they should be running on one particular time, and they go ahead and execute. I want uh, uh, want to thank our guys Chris Toth and Anthony Ferrugio today for helping out up here, have, sitting up here and making things happen, getting us ready, making things happen for Sam Webb down on the field. Uh, we'll try to check in with Sam a few more times. I'm going to run the threes, Danny. I'll run the threes out there. So Jack Kennedy gets another shot. Jimmy Potempa lined up to his right. you got two wide receivers to both sides. Kennedy's just going to keep it. He's going to hesitate, and uh, he's going to be dropped for a loss of about two yards. But he was trying to do it himself, and again, that answers my question. He's got those black numbers on, which means he is open for contact, so good for him. I just didn't think they made red 18s. Maybe not. So here they will line up now third and eight. And, again, Potempo will be lined up on his left now. Potempo gets the handoff, gets He's the in. blocks. He's in for a touchdown, untouched, as you got to give the uh, lead block there. I think it was uh, I think it was Nowicki, that uh, Brian Nowicki that had the big block there, the big number 70, and it was in the backfield. And that busted up, gave him the seam, and he scampers it in from eight yards. So now the game is over. As the scrimmage is over, that was the last play. The white will line up on the 50, and uh, the blue will line up as well, yep. and they will get out there. We'll try to get Sam down there and get a little bit of the noise down there, a little bit of the field-level sound. But that is all, folks. It was not a normal scrimmage like you would think, of offense versus defense in terms of regular score, but we got to see a lot about this team uh, that we had questions about, and uh, certainly the fans showing their appreciation. And, hey, you know, nice afternoon for football. So fantastic uh, morning, afternoon, and uh, there'll be lots to talk about here from what we've seen today. Uh, the offense, I, I thought, looked uh, very good at times. The defense, at times, um, not as well, but they're also a bit more undermanned. And, uh, you know, everybody's playing base. Everybody's, you know, it's vanilla. And nobody's trying to do any extra caveats. There's no blitz packages in going <laughs> in the defense in this type of situation. Uh, but it's good to see both sides the maize and the blue out there performing uh doing what they can and for them it wraps it up We've got one more practice uh coming up on this tuesday which is going to be more informational more than anything else because they're going to be out on their own they're going to be with the, the strength and conditioning coaches but uh they're out on their own about what they need to individually work on they're going to try to uh, adhere to the program and then be ready again in early august what a great scene, though, is, again, uh, over 50, they estimate 50,000 here. I don't think it's far off. I don't think they're stretching it. You look at it, you try to figure out if it's half full. Was it look, did it look half full? I think, yeah, it did look about half full today. Good estimation on the crowd. Again, 40,000 uh, was the previous estimation. But the fans are getting ready to uh, uh, exit the gates, and uh, we'll try to catch up with Sam. i tell you what, um, it looks like the team's going to huddle up for to, to sing the victors. And I wonder if Sam, Sam, can you hear us? Are you down there, Sam? Looks like we might not get connected with Sam. So we will uh, we'll check in on the sideline. I hate, hesitate to take the break if Sam is down there. We'll hold it here just for one moment. Uh, again, they can't give you a score today because there certainly wasn't one. We come back and we thought some uh, final thoughts on the game, and uh, we'll do that. We'll take a break. We'll come back with some final thoughts. We'll wrap it up here from 2009 spring game. This is... Uh, Sports Talk 1050 WTK. Are you ready for a dump truck? Or a sport utility? Hey, hey, this is Briarwood Ford with the best price guarantee.
Firewood Ford is proud to announce the Ford Advantage Plan. Buy or lease a new Ford, and your payments are covered for up to 12 months if you lose your paycheck. Plus, 0% APR limited term financing is available on most new Fords. New 09 Ford F-150s with automatic, air, and V8. Only $14,990. A plan for returning Ford lessees. Or lease a new 09 Ford Fusion. Only $244 a month. Briarwood Ford. Located on the corner of State and Michigan, five minutes south of Briarwood Mall. Call 877-954-FORD or click briarwoodford.com. All offers with a fruit credit. See dealer for full program details and qualifications. Must be returning less eight with a plan to qualify. 36 month lease, $24.99 total due inception. Security deposit waived. Dealer retains all factory finance rebates and incentives, including loan. Plus tax plate, destination of fees, expires 6109. Whether you drive a 99 Neon or a 79 Pinot hatchback, brand new Chevy truck or an old Cutlass Supreme, you can have the best sound around. You are listening to live exclusive coverage of the 2009 Michigan Spring Football Game on Sports Talk 1050 WTKA. Now, back to the big house with your host, Andy Evans. All right, as we begin to wrap things up here, it was a beautiful day at uh, Michigan Stadium and a day in which the fans showed up in large numbers to watch the 2009 Michigan Spring Scrimmage, as we'll probably uh, you know, call it, because it certainly was not a game. But it was something we expected. And, uh, Steve Clark, just some of your thoughts on today's game. Let's start with the offensive side of the ball, where a lot of people uh, were probably coming to see. Uh, start with the young quarterback, Tate Forrest. Yeah, your evaluation on him. Well, he looked very good today. Uh, I mean, there were some little mistakes that he made, but it looked like he had command of the offense. He was able to move the chains, not just on big plays, but just, you know, getting first downs and moving across the field. Uh, stretching things out, eating up clock. If this was an actual game situation, he was able to eat up some time in possession. And uh, we saw the one throw uh, over the top. Uh, I believe it was uh, was it to Robin, Robinson, I think, at one point. But he threw like a 50-yard a touchdown uh, pass in, in the middle of the field. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. Now, bear in mind again that the Nick Sheridan that we saw in 2008 isn't the Nick Sheridan we're going to see in 2009. So I don't think that this quarterback race is over. I think Denard Robinson coming in from Florida because of his speed and uh, his ability is going to be a factor in of it somewhat. Uh, but I, Tate, things couldn't have gone better for Tate Forcier for his spring because of the people around him and the transferring and in injuries. And being able to enroll early in January has been all very beneficial for him in his Michigan career. You know, offensively too, coach picking up, uh, coach Hanlon picking up with the same thing. I, I really was impressed by seeing both Brandon Miner and Carlos Brown in the in the backfield. Something to be encouraged about if those guys can stay healthy this year. Well, that's always been the big if. I mean, Carlos Brown has not been able to stay healthy during the course of his uh, playing career, and if, and if he's great, Brandon Miner, um, you know, his issues in the past was being able to hang onto the football, uh, but uh, I think that's uh, been taken care of. And we could see those two guys on the field quite a bit. And some guys coming away from uh, an injury, Michael Shaw has a, has a chance to make an impact. And Vincent Smith has been the surprise of spring so far. Not, I don't think it was very well highly thought of by people on the outside coming in, but he certainly made his impression in the, in the last month or so since spring practice has begun. And I think he has a way of being maybe the uh, third or fourth back in there at this time. Yeah, uh, up front, you always start with the Hogs up front. Uh, I thought certainly today you saw two lines where I don't think you could distinguish necessarily between them. You know, they say Ricky Barnum, you mentioned Jonas Mutau. Ricky Barnum's a guy also that's behind uh, redshirt freshman lineman that Coach, uh, Coach Rodriguez told us the other day he has a chance to play in the fall. He's the guy that's injured, couldn't play today. What do you think of the offensive line? Well, Bottom? Ricky Barnum is the guy that uh, Rodriguez has been hired on since uh, high on since he was basically being redshirted since he first came in. So he always has a chance that once he gets healthy to be able to fight for it in August. I, I think what's been really pleasing uh, to everybody is that the tackle position seemed to be well enough that has allowed Steve Schilling to be able to move from tackle to guard. And you've got some player position battles between Perry Dorstein and Mark Ortman at one tackle spot. And you're going to see a nice tackle position uh, uh, fight between uh, Mark Hugie and Patrick O'Malley, who's uh, another guy that Rich Rodriguez has been very high on but has not played it down on the Michigan field yet. Uh, the centers is going to be Moult, Mooseman, and Schilling.